Hello everyone, good morning. In this video, I will shed some light on how to prepare for FRCS Urology Section 1 exam. As you know by now, FRCS Urology exam consists of two parts, Section 1 which is single best answer and Section 2 which comprises of case based scenarios. I have already uploaded an audio on Section 2, so in this I will focus only on Section 1. As for the format of the exam, Section 1 is a written test and tests your knowledge. It is a computer-based exam. It consists of two papers which are taken on the same day at a specialized venue. Paper 1 lasts about 2 hours 15 minutes, is single best answer question and there are 120 questions in total. While the paper 2 also lasts 2 hours 15 minutes, is also single best answer type and also comprises of 120 questions. Previously, this format was different, but now it is of this type. What to study for it? For theory, you should just not restrict yourself to urology, but also must do applied basic sciences which are related to urology and these form a major chunk of questions. This is the mistake which candidates make while preparing for this exam. So coming to the scoring system, the passing rate varies depending on how good a batch of candidates are usually. And it's around 68%. How many attempts you can take for section one? There are maximum of four attempts per section one in a total of four years from the time you first appear in section one exam. After this, you cannot retake the exam. So be very well prepared before you take this exam. How to study for it? People mostly focus on studying urology while leaving the basic sciences which are related to urology. So just do not make that mistake. The best approach is to take one topic at a time and do as many MCQs as possible on it and that will help you out. The section 1 is a simple exam as compared to section 2 because you are alone facing the computer and you don't have any examiner sitting in front of you. Exam is computer based, is held at a recognized center, it is user friendly and you can also flag any questions you are not sure of and you can come back later to it. My advice is to review all the questions at the end and not just the flagged ones. You must be very careful when answering the questions in exam. Time yourself well. Time is of essence. It is very much doable. Work hard and practice solving as many MCQs as you can possibly. The results are available within four weeks of the date of exam. The successful candidates progress to section 2. Remember, be positive. If others have done it, so can you. Now coming to the embryology, what level of knowledge you are expected to have related to the field of urology as a part 1 candidate? You need to know about the different time frames in embryology in terms of the genital tract, for example, the genital tract remains undifferentiated till sixth week and then it differentiates into male or female genitalia based on the presence or absence of sex determining region on the Y chromosome. By seventh week, the MIS or the malarian inhibitory substance is produced, which by tenth week causes the first phase of testicular descent and regression of the malarian structures. Testosterone causes the development of internal genitalia, for instance, the Wolfian duct structures, and also causes the second phase of descent by around 25 to 30th week. While the dihydrotestosterone is responsible for the development of prostate by around 12 to 13 weeks and also causes development of external genitalia. Now, the time frames in terms of the urinary tract. Pronephros appears around 4 weeks and rapidly regresses. Metonephros appears in 5 weeks time and at this time the uretric bud arises from the mesonephric duct. Also, the uretric bud fuses with the metonephric blastema at this time. 
The period of nephrogenesis is from 6th week to 36th weeks. Horseshoe kidney or crossed ectopia occurs around 6 to 10 weeks. Urine production in fetus starts by 10th week and at term majority of amniotic fluid is fetal urine. Now you need to know about the embryological origin of urogenital structures. For example, embryological origin of the genital system. You should know that there is a paramesonephric or a malarian duct derivative which in female gives rise to fallopian tube, uterus and upper two-third of vagina. While in male, this paramesonephric duct or mullerian duct derivatives, they regress in the presence of MIS. And the remnants are veru montanum, appendix testis and prostatic utricle. While the embryological origin of the genital system in terms of mesonephric duct or the wolfian duct derivatives, are as follows. In female, this regresses in the absence of testosterone and the remnants are epophron, paraophron, Gartner cyst, Skene's gland. While in male, the Wolfian duct derivatives give rise to the retitestis, epididymis, vas deferens, seminal vesicles, ejaculatory duct and the trigon of bladder. As far as the embryological origin of the urinary system is concerned, you should know about the ureteric bud that it arises from the mesonephric duct and it gives rise to ureter, renal pelvis, major and minor calluses and the collecting duct. The metanephros gives rise to the glomuli, the proximal convoluted tubule, the loop of Henle, the collecting tubules and the distal collecting tubules. The urogenital sinus endoderm gives rise to the body of the bladder, urethra, prostate and the lower one-third of vagina. Also, you need to have some idea about the complete duplex system. The ureteric orifice of the upper moiety lies below and medial to the ureteric orifice of the lower moiety and this is a Weigert mayer rule. In these, upper pole demonstrates obstruction while the lower pole demonstrates vesicoureteral reflux. You should know something about the uh, embryology of compartmentalization of cloaca for you to comment on bladder extrophy, epispadias and cloacal extrophy. Also know something about the chromosomes for you to understand disorder of sex development. Normal human male cell contains 46 chromosomes. That is 23 pairs of chromosomes which consists of 22 pairs of autosomes and one pair of sex chromosome that is 46XX or 46XY. And remember in Klein-Filter syndrome, they have 47 double XY and in Turner syndrome, it is 45 x naught. I have already talked about normal sexual differentiation in males and females in the disorder of sex development audio. Please do refer to that from there. And you need to be aware of the two phases of the testicular descent, which I covered in the palpable undescended testis audio. So this is what you are expected to know in embryology. Try to solve as many MCQs as you can possibly on the embryology from as many books as you can get your hands on. And uh, I have given you a brief summary of what you are expected to know in embryology and I hope this helped. I will be posting more audios on how to target the section 1 FRCS urology and uh, thank you very much.